what we are seeing with the Vogue article is not just an attempt to be transgressive, obviously. It's an attempt to redefine masculinity itself. If he wants to wear a dress, let him wear a damn dress. I don't give a damn. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't that does not measure the 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 amount of manliness you have in your body. So then when I saw the cover and it came out, I didn't even flinch. Yeah. I know it's a boy in a dress, but not one part of me was mm. like, "Ooh." Vogue posts the cover of their December issue with Harry Styles, and it breaks the internet. Before I get into the story, I just want to put out a disclaimer. Please do not send any hate to Harry Styles, Logan Paul, Candace Owens, Ben Shapiro, or anyone else involved in this story. This video is simply meant to report on the news and give some insight on the situation. On November 13th, Vogue announced that Harry Styles was going to be the cover star for their December issue. With this cover, Harry would be the first man to appear solo on the cover of Vogue. The photos featured in the article showed Harry in a wide variety of outfits, including dresses and skirts. Twitter users were excited to see him featured. This is what a strong, confident man looks like. Thank you, Vogue magazine, and especially Harry Styles, for showing all people, no matter how they identify, fashion is what you make of it. You are gorgeous. Groundbreaking cover with the perfect man. Harry's unfettered by modern convention in music and presentation, yet he's not an audacious opposing force. He has a strong, steady inner compass. Kudos to Vogue and everyone who pulled this together. Listening to Hamish's preamble and video. One user compared Harry's photo shoot to David Bowie and Prince. Love this so much. I see power, freedom, and confidence, a la David Bowie, Prince, and so many others. If men are threatened by a hottie in a dress, maybe they are the ones with masculinity issues. Why do people take others' lives so personal? Not your thing, move on. Some users weren't thrilled to see Harry in a dress. When children draw their stick-like figure in school, they put the dress on a female. Who do the put the dress on now, and who represents those female or male? Imagine the confusion going on in their minds. I'm gonna need a whole day of watching reruns of A-Team, old westerns, and action movies to get these images out of my head. This world needs masculinity now more than ever. One person who wasn't afraid to voice their opinion was conservative author Candace Owens. There is no society that can survive without strong men. The East knows this. In the West, the steady feminization of our men at the same time that Marxism is being taught to our children is not a coincidence. This is an outright attack. Bring back manly men. Some celebrities were quick to call her out. Olivia Wilde said, You're pathetic. I think you've missed the definition of what a man is. Masculinity alone does not make a man. After Candace tweeted about the situation, she began trending on Twitter. Candace sent out another tweet when she noticed herself trending. Since I'm trending, I'd like to clarify what I meant when I said bring back manly men. I meant bring back manly men. Terms like toxic masculinity were created by toxic females. Real women don't do fake feminism. Sorry I'm not sorry. Some Twitter users agreed with Candace. I don't understand why this is controversial. Men wearing dresses and acting feminine isn't attractive to a huge portion of women. Cut me down a tree and bring me the heart of a bear instead. The men in my life love being men. They protect, they provide, and can change their own tire. And I like it that way. Oh yeah, they open the door for me and I like that too. Many others disagreed with her. Explain to me how you're okay wearing a suit for Playboy, but when it comes to a man wearing a dress you are disgusted? It's the hypocrisy for me. Yikes. Truly, truly, yikes. This is harmful to all people, Candace. This is incredibly harmful. Men suffer, women suffer, and society suffers when you place these outdated expectations on men. Stop trying to harm America and our progress. By your logic, bring back submissive females that do not have jobs and can only take care of the home and have kids. Take away every single right of every single minority group ever because it wasn't socially or politically normal back in the 1700s. It's a two-way street. On November 16th, political commentator Ben Shapiro quote tweeted Candace's tweet and said, This is perfectly obvious. Anyone who pretends that it is not a referendum on masculinity for men to don floofy dresses is treating you as a full-on idiot. Ben continued with a thread of tweets replying to his quote tweet, Masculinity and femininity exist. Outward indicators of masculinity and femininity exist in nearly every human culture. Boys are taught to be more masculine in virtually every human culture because the role of men is not always the same as the role of women. The left knows this, of course. The point of Styles doing this photo shoot is to feminize masculinity. Otherwise, why would it be headline worthy for Styles to don a dress? The left knows this. They openly say that gender is both important and socially constructed, which is why they tell you that a man can be a woman, etc. 
up despite no biological underpinning. If femininity and masculinity exist, they have indicators. Dress has always been such an indicator. That's why men wearing female garb has been a sign of femininity in virtually all cultures for all time. Some Twitter users tweeted at Ben about men's traditional clothing that resembles dresses and skirts. You intentionally overlook the traditional clothing of ancient civilizations who wore skirts or robes regardless of gender. Because people with a stupid point of view, such as yourself, the left knows this, consider gender to be this huge thing that needs to have rules. Men have worn skirts and dressed like attire since humans discovered how to make clothes. Ben addressed these tweets in his Twitter thread. This holds true whether men wear kilts and women wear the era said, or whether men wear pants and women wear dresses. The argument that men in Scotland wear kilts so men in America wearing dresses isn't feminine is particularly stupid. Pretending that men dressing like women does not feminize men is ridiculous, particularly coming from the same people who are celebrating Styles because he is feminizing masculinity. Left. Hey, look at how important and magical it is that Harry Styles is wearing a dress. He's subversively undermining masculinity. Right. Yes, men wearing dresses does undermine masculinity, and that's bad. Left. How dare you say men wearing dresses undermines masculinity? Just like Candace, Ben had some supporters. It's uh, incredibly hot to have a man that is rooted in reality and in the truth. To be in the arms of someone who protects his family and his woman by knowing what is going on around him. Men have one job and they are blowing it. We used to joke this is what Germany did, getting rid of their alpha males. I can't believe it's become a trend. However, most Twitter users disagreed with him. What I think Ben Shapiro and Candace Owen don't understand or disingenuously ignore is that all indicators of masculinity and femininity are mediated. There is nothing inherently masculine about clothing, and the Harry Styles photo shoot highlights that. I want to see Harry body slam Ben Shapiro while wearing the dress. Even Reddit had plenty to say about Ben's tweets. The incapability to realize that strong doesn't equal masculine is super annoying. My mother raised five kids by herself. She dealt with an incredible number of things, and she's also pretty feminine. Like, those aren't mutually exclusive dumb. Also, complaining about men being weak when you literally cannot cope with someone wearing a literal f skirt without complaining is incredibly ironic. I'm triggered by good-looking men, Ben Shapiro. Even if society does need strong men, whatever that means, that isn't being eroded by some men being more feminine or wearing dresses. You'll still have stereotypical masculine manly men, and that's fine. Not everyone is the same. On November 17th, Candace tweeted about Twitter users sending her pictures of men in dresses. Newsflash, woke idiots. When you send me pictures of Freddie Mercury and Kurt Cobain dressed as women to prove your point, you are actually proving mine. Stable men do not wear ball gowns. The end. Look at this dr and man who committed they wore dresses too. Just impossibly stupid. A Twitter user asked her about what she thought about David Bowie. For context, David Bowie was known for being androgynous and challenging gender norms. Candace replied, he was very open about his and various abuses coming up in the music industry and the paranoid psychosis would inspire. Hollywood glorifies struggle, mainstream and castigates normal people for calling out the madness of it all. A person will be calling out for help and Hollywood sycophants will be like, stunning, brave. It's the reason we lose so many talented musicians so young, because their fans are their biggest enablers. Twitter users continue to disagree with her. Er, you are aware David Bowie went on to live a long and productive life. He even got married, to a beautiful woman no less. Even with his lack of manliness and all, it's 2020. Feel free to join us whenever, because they are brave for calling out for help. It's okay to need help every once in a while. It's okay for a man to need help, and it's okay for them to wear whatever the hell they want. On November 17th, Harry's mother, Anne Twist, appeared on the UK talk show Lorraine. She said, I think maybe I had something to do with it because I was always a big fan of doing fancy dress with the kids when they were smaller, which Gemma hated but Harry always embraced. On November 17th, Logan Paul uploaded a new episode of his podcast, Impulsive. In the episode, Logan and his friends, George and Mike, talk about Harry's Vogue cover. He got on the cover of Vogue and uh, he was wearing a dress. He was wearing a dress. Wearing a dress doing whippets. <laughs> what? What the f were they thinking? I think he's, with this no, cover? He's, he's blowing up a balloon. Oh, God dang. My brain is just in all the wrong places. Today. No, but look. Okay, so to me, I see this and I'm like, what G. Like, he don't, he don't give up. Right? Wait, is that really what you think, or is that what you're saying? But like, I swear you to God, see I swear Harry Styles even... wearing a dress, yeah. like your immediate thought is, "Wow, this guy's a real gangster." Yep, yep. Because I'm all about cha challenging social norms. Logan's co-host George explained he liked things the way they were. Logan was confused by his explanation. But nice what is the way it is? The way it's been? Well, why? Because the way it's been is 
not been great. Logan continued to defend the cover. I don't think there's much to it. Like he wanted to try something and, and he did it and it's dope and it, it worked for me. It doesn't work for some people. Logan then read out Candace Owens' tweet and George agreed with her. Bro, why? What, what, it ain't manly. What is manly to you? What does it mean? Is manly like being comfortable in your own skin and being comfortable with who you are, regardless of what people think about what you're wearing? I get that. And I understand it's okay to uh, venture out and try new things and do things. And I, and I think it's great for people not to judge other people. But Yeah, man. I, just but, like you are now. Logan's friends then accused him of being combative. You're the type of people no, that will look at no, it and are like, I, I, Oh, men listen, gotta be men and they can't wear dresses. Listen, None of us suck it. Bro, no, I would do this in a heartbeat. No one's, no one no said, one said that. I wouldn't do it. No, no one said he didn't no, do it. No one said that. What? It, the notion of it, the idea of it, and the idea of him donning a, a magazine dress in a dress elicits a conversation. And it's a conversation. The problem that's, is that's people are too quick to get right angry like you. You get angry at our opinion. And I think, and I well, think I, that's not I, fair. Wait, what am I angry about? You got really quick to get mad at me and Mike when? immediately. There's no conversation. You just got mad immediately. Let's I'm listening to you, telling me you don't want to judge people, and then watching you judge people. So yeah, I'm listening. And I'm, no one's well, judging you. I'm not anybody. getting angry, but nobody calling anybody. you out for your flaw. So now and, I have a flaw it, for my opinion. Your lack of so it's a logic. So when my you, my point of view is a flaw. I never even said your point of view is a flaw. See what I'm saying by you being angry? You just do I, me. Do I look angry to you? And do you, you know what it means? Well, he's, I, I'm telling you that your lack of logic <laughs> will lose you the argument when you say, yeah, man, like people shouldn't judge people, but like this is, he's not a man because he's wearing a dress. No, no, never once that I said he's not a man for wearing a dress. You well, said it's not manly. Mike tried to mediate the two. Here's the thing. Different strokes for different folks. I think there's, there, it is, it is completely, I believe that it is completely okay for Logan to feel like Harry Styles can wear a dress and for George to feel like this doesn't meet the the idea of what he thinks should be. I think that that is completely okay. Some commenters accuse George of gaslighting Logan. Logan, I disagree. Guy, whoa, 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 let's chill, Logan. This is what happens when you have nothing better to say. Resort to gaslighting. Does anyone else get the vibe that maybe, just maybe, Logan has outgrown his friends? I've only seen a few of his podcasts, so I could be wrong, but he always comes off a lot more articulate and educated on the more serious subjects. Also, absolute disrespect to try to gaslight him on his show? He handled this so well. Some commenters commented on how Logan has gained their respect. I feel like in the past two years, Logan's really changed as a person, and I respect that. Logan, I gained a lot of respect for you. To hear your so-called friends gaslight you is so troubling, and for you to respond in a mature manner is great to hear. I would have been furious. You are in the right, and we need to be more progressive as a society. Men have been wearing dresses since the dawn of time. On December 2nd, Harry clapped back at Candace Owens' tweet by posting a photo of himself on on Twitter with the caption, Bring Back Manly Men, referring to Candace's tweet. Candace replied to Harry's tweet on her Instagram story. She put the hashtag, Bring Back Manly Men, over her story as she spoke. Personally, I kind of like the outfit he's wearing. I mean, he looks stupid, but he doesn't look feminine. He kind of just looks like he's in a different century, and I think it looks good. He's giving me Henry VIII meets Michael Jackson, You Are Not Alone vibes. I'm, I'm digging it. I would wear it, Harry. I love you. After sharing the video, she included a photo of Harry dressed as a soldier for his role in the film Dunkirk. And that seems to be the end of the drama for now. So, what's the big issue? The complicated situation with gendered clothing and colors and toxic masculinity. While Harry has made headlines by wearing a dress on the cover of Vogue, he isn't the first man to publicly wear a dress. In the past, it was common for men to wear dresses or skirts, not only in David Bowie's Daily Mirror photo shoot from 1971, but in ancient times. In ancient civilizations, the Egyptians had loincloths. The Greeks and Romans had togas, which could show which class someone belonged to. The Aztecs had military costumes consisting of loincloths and cloaks. These skirt-like outfits were chosen because they gave men the ability to move more freely while farming, hunting, building, etc. In the 14th and 15th centuries, it became fashionable for men to wear hosiery with their outfits. It was considered manly to wear a dress-like tunic and considered unacceptable to be worn without hosiery. This fashion style continued through the 16th and 17th centuries. In the 19th century, tight-fitted breeches began taking over. Women found them to be very desirable as they showed off a man's legs and behind. 
If we fast forward to our current time, there are still plenty of cultures whose clothing resembles skirts or dresses. For example, in East Asia, for celebrations and holidays, Japanese men wear yukatas and kimonos, which are traditional style robes. In India, for celebrations and holidays, men wear kurtas, which are long tunics worn over pants that resemble dresses. So it's not as uncommon as people think for men to wear clothing that resembles dresses or skirts. The idea that skirts and dresses are associated with femininity is more rooted in Western culture. Society has created social constructs for clothing that men must dress masculine and wear pants. However, many celebrities, including Harry, have tried to break those constructs and show it isn't taboo for a man to wear a skirt. This isn't the first time society has assigned gender to clothing. The pink and blue debate is a popular concept that was also socially constructed. Many clothing companies make pink clothing for female babies and blue clothing for male babies. However, those colors weren't always assigned to a gender. In fact, the opposite used to be true. According to Smithsonian Magazine, a 1918 copy of Earnshaw's Infants Department had an article outlining then-current color associations for babies. The generally accepted rule is pink for the boys and blue for the girls. The reason is that pink, being a more decided and stronger color, is more suitable for the boy, while blue, which is more delicate and dainty, is prettier for the girl. Joe B. Paoletti, a historian from the the University of Maryland also claimed some sources said blue was flattering for blonde babies and pink for brunettes, and that blue was for blue-eyed babies and pink for brown-eyed babies. In the 1940s, things began to change. Baby boomers were raised in gender-specific clothing. Boys were dressed like their fathers, and girls were dressed like their mothers. In the 1960s, when the women's liberation movement happened, unisex looks became very popular, to the point where Paoletti noticed there were two years in the 1970s where Sears didn't sell pink clothing for female toddlers. The thought was if children and young women were dressed more masculine and like boys, they would be more free to be active and open to new options. Paoletti talked about how the nature versus nurture debate became a driving factor. Many believe gender to be based on nurture rather than nature. Paoletti says prenatal testing was the big reason for the change back to pink for girls and blue for boys. Parents would find out the sex of their children and purchase clothes and other items that were associated with their assigned sex. Since many mothers in the 1980s grew up during the women's liberation movement, they rejected the unisex look for their daughters and pushed stereotypically feminine things like the color pink, Barbie dolls, and long hair. Now, parents like Harry's mother understand a person can be successful no matter how they present themselves. Toxic masculinity is a problem rampant in our society. According to the Journal of School of Psychology, toxic masculinity can be defined as the constellation of socially regressive, masculine traits that serve to foster domination, the devaluation of women, homophobia, and wanton violence. We see examples of toxic masculinity in this story with people like Ben Shapiro and Candace Owens. They believe that because a man is doing something that is perceived as feminine, like wearing a dress, it means he isn't a real man or can't be considered manly. Toxic masculinity can be present in everyday life. Some common examples of toxic masculinity include telling someone to man up or saying boys will be boys. Telling someone to man up could lead to pushing impressionable young men to hide their emotions or convince them their emotions aren't valid. Using boys will be boys is dangerous because it teaches boys they don't need to hold themselves accountable for their actions. It's important that boys are taught from a young age that it's okay to show emotion and to be interested in more stereotypically feminine things. And it's also important to teach them that even if they want to wear non-masculine clothing, it doesn't make them any less manly. Overall, it seems the times are changing and people are becoming more accepting of different types and colors of clothing. History also suggests clothing was made for more practical uses rather than fashion or style. Do you think this idea should still be applied today? What do you think about Harry Styles wearing a dress? Do you believe certain clothes make men appear more manly? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the like button. To keep up on all the tea, consider subscribing to the channel.